All right, ladies and gentlemen, Scum Hell's Kitchen 0 0.8.500.67830. Zero zero I've got my camera off on purpose. This is from uh, Steam DB, I think. Patch notes from the Steam community. Hey everyone, the wait is over. 0 0.85 is finally here. It's been a while, but we are glad we can finally bring this huge update to you. It's 4.17 gig on my system. Boy, is it big. Let's check it out. All right. I haven't looked at any of this, so it's going to be new to me too. It's no secret that we had to do a soft wipe for this update with the amount of reworks placed. With soft wipes, usually gold is left alone. And it's one of the main purposes for it. Uh, unfortunately, we saw a lot of gold being bought due to exploits since the last wipe and decide that gold will be wiped out this time as well. Perfect. It is unfortunate that the legit players got affected by this as well. If we did not, those that did would have too much advantage on server over others that made that such a decision had to be made. Loot rework. Is heft in the back end. Our level designers went and reworked each and every spawner for the rework, so you'll see loot that makes much more sense. Looting will now be much more pleasant experience, and more important, one of the bigger changes is that loot no longer resets on server restart. That's right, you can no longer just camp inside the bunker waiting for a restart. Get out there, you lazy bum. We also have had preparations for private servers to have more control over loot on their servers with what will be able to spawn. And such, unfortunately, it's not quite ready <clears throat> yet, but will be through a smaller update in coming days. No shit. Hunting rework. Second rework won't be the last one as well. For now, let's focus on hunting. It has been completely revamped and will require a lot more skill to hunt that big or small game. Well, I'd like to see some big or small game other than bears, boars, and wolves. Uh, I saw a goat occasionally. Get your hunting rifle, your fuzzy wool hats, and some beers. Because we know no one hunts sober. And listen up. Well, I resemble that statement. The hunt will start as soon as you hear an animal noise somewhere. Depending on the animal, the noise will be different. But it always points you in the direction where you need to move. Search the area in focus mode and you will be able to find your first clue. Alright. Well, I was expecting paw prints or something. You found your first clue, now you can go up to it and interact to get a hint about where the animal went. Alright. Uh, follow the direction, audio hints from the animal to find the second track. You'll a couple more times, follow the clues, and you'll see it. A majestic beast in all its glory. Don't take too much time. If you wait too long between the clues, the animal will get away and you'll become a vegetarian. And you will need that meat. Cooking rework. Oh, I can't fucking wait. <clears throat> This is a big one. Finally, after all this time, the cooking rework has landed in scum. We worked hard on this and can't wait to show you what's in store. I can't wait to see it. It's probably bullshit, but I'll, you know what? Prove me wrong. Before, we had some simple yet confusing dishes in the crafting menu that did not have as much control as we would like. For example, there's no way to determine what is an op optional ingredient and what is not, and that was not, and it was not that interesting. How do we cook? Well, chefs, here it is. Start out, you need a heat source. Thankfully, we have plenty to choose from. You already know the fire ring and improvised fireplace. And there's the little burners. Portable gas stove, portable electric stove. Evidently, electricity is a thing now, right? Portable sources of heat, gas and electric. That's right, there's nothing for free, so you'll need to have a power source for them. Let's take a segment of explaining the new electricity and gas system feature. We implemented two new energy sources, electricity and gas. Let's start with gas. For gas, you need a brand new item to transport and use it, the gas tank. That looks like liquefied petroleum gas. Um, I do like this. You have a gas tank. You can fill it up. One of the gas stations has a big gas tank. That's LP. That's not gasoline for anybody who didn't know the difference. Liquefied petroleum is not gasoline. Liquefied petroleum is in liquid form when it's under pressure and then when it becomes a gas again it expands i think 247 times if i remember from my training correctly and when you know, say you connect a stove you just put it near your tank will have a radius around it to show where it can connect to so you can hold f 
on the tank. I like that. Anything inside this radius is considered connected. Okay, that's good. The portable gas stove can also be filled with gas by itself. All right, fair enough. You could run that. You could have a gasoline stove. I actually have a multi-fuel stove in real life. It runs on jet fuel, gasoline, kerosene, diesel, white gas, I think. Off of Amazon, it was under 100 bucks, and I thought it was very neat, so I thought I'd get one. Anyway, <clears throat> I haven't tried it, but I've got one. Scum generators, medium and small. That looks good. Uh, they work in similar fashion as gas tanks, considering the radius with a little difference. They're petrol-powered, so you will need to feed it that black gold. Once it has its own power source, you can turn it on and use any appliance in the radius as long as you have power. The difference is it will consume fuel as long as it's turned on, no matter if you have appliances connected to it or not. For now, you can connect them to the prefab ovens, electric stoves, and refrigerators. Yes, you read the last one right. Fridges are now a thing, and quite important, there are two in the game. One you already know, the prefab refrigerator you find in houses, and a new portable one. I've got one that looks almost exactly like that. It has a door on it, though. They're amazingly useful for storing food, because as long as you have food and drinks, the fridge will completely stop decay on all of them. Just make sure you turn both the generator and the fridge on. All right, I like that. All right, now you understand how to turn your stoves on. Let's get back to cooking. How do we cook? First thing you need is a cookbook, and after all, what is a cook without a good recipe? There are multiple cookbooks available with its own type of recipes, from stews to casseroles. To become a master chef, you'll need to collect them all. When you have your cookbook, you can open up a new menu, new tab in the tab menu called Cooking, where all known recipes will be listed to see what ingredients you need. All right. Uh, so gather your ingredients and needed utilities, depending on the recipe, pot or pan, and let's get cooking. Now, hopefully there's more pots and pans available than there was from the last update, because they were few and far between. In this example, we're going to be cooking goulash. Connected the gas tank to the stove, put... A pot on one of the rings. Different heat sources will have different number of available slots for cooking. So a prefab stove can cook four dishes at once and one extra in the oven while a portable one can only cook one or two at a time. For the goulash, we'll need a pot as well. So we have all of it. We slotted the pot on one of the rings and interacted with the pot to start cooking. Cooking menu will open and we will drag and drop the ingredients to the required slots and add some optional as well. Mandatory ingredients have a green indicator on them while optional ones are blue. All right, that makes sense. Uh, once everything is set, we can press the cook icon and the stove will turn on and start cooking. All right, you will see a timer going off and the time it takes to get the perfect meal. I like that. <clears throat> the time shown is in-game time. Now you wait and are free to do other things while it cooks. After a while, the progress bar will turn green. I hope that there is um, a section here about cooking steaks, cooking the meat, fish steaks, bear steaks, boar steaks, whatever. Because that was just, just crazy. This means it's ready to eat, but if you turn it off prematurely, you will get a meal of poor quality. Once you are done, you can press the icon to stop cooking, and voila, your goulash is ready. Now, um... Back in the day, if something was slightly cooked, you could eat it and or slightly burnt, and it would not give you uh, food repulsion. So we'll see about that. Uh, all the ingredients you use have a part to play in the nutritional value of the meal. So the more optional ingredients you add, the more nutrients your meal will have, and it will help you recover your exhaustion faster. Now, I'm just going to see if I can still eat um, mushrooms and cornflakes. I might not need any of this shit, okay? I'm just saying. If I can still eat mushrooms and cornflakes, I'm going to keep doing that. I'm not going to spend all this time cooking unless there's some compelling reason to do it. Uh, the rest we will leave to you to explore and play around with. Uh, and those fire rings we mentioned, there are some changes with cooking them as well. You now have two items that go along with them in order to cook. Uh, there was talk about just being able to throw all your, you know, center the cooking surface over the fire and then throw all your meat on top and it would all cook the same. The old improvised grill you are familiar, but now it has been reworked and we now have a new proper grill. 
you can place them over the fire and grill whatever is available on them. The improvised only has one slot for grilling, while the proper one has two and is a lot more durable. The new Sentry. Kids, do you like mechs? Do you want them bigger, stronger, with more weapons to torture you with? Say no more. Mech 2.0. I didn't like the first mechs. But anyway, dual machine gun, grenade launchers with flashbang, CS gas, and HE high explosive, I'm assuming. And for you pesky little meat bags that think about taking it on from range, it even has a nice surprise for you as well if you piss it off enough. Missile launcher or sniper. That looks like a Gauss rifle, like a rail gun or something. This new threat will surely make you think twice before you start pissing it off. Don't worry, it won't use all of its weapons on you immediately, for it has some, although very limited, mercy protocols. Hands up. Prisoner, leave this area immediately. Depending on your compliance and aggression level towards it, it will gradually increase the number of weapons deployed against you. So behave yourself, children. What's that? You want to be naughty? You actually want to take on the beast? Oh, well, here are some new toys then. Rocket launchers! Let's go. You asked for them a lot, and they are finally here. The big boomsticks. We had not one, but three. There better be a fucking RPG in there. We have the AT-4 in heat and... Uh, High explosive, I don't know what DP stands for. Detonating projectile, maybe. Um, yep, there's an RPG, thankfully. The RPG with the heat and frag rocket variants. Many of you already know what they are and how they work, but for you rookies, here's a short description. RPG-7 is Soviet-made, man-portable, multi-shot, shoulder-fired, rocket-propelled, grenade launcher, Widely produced in many variants, most famous rocket launcher around the world, 40 millimeter rocket propelled warhead. Warheads come in multiple sizes and purposes, making the RPG a versatile weapon that has been time tested and field proven for generations. AT4 is a single shot, 84 millimeter, shoulder fired, recoilless launcher. It is a modern solution for a light disposable man portable anti-armored and anti-fortifications launcher that's a mouthful it is effective against light armored vehicles what will, will be useless against any heavy armor or fortifications i wonder if you can shoot mechs with them that's my first question high explosive anti-tank warhead oh high explosive dual purpose is the hedp uh, the heat warhead carries a shape charge explosive meant to penetrate heavier armor but is less effective in a wide area. The HEDP warhead combines armor penetration ability with fragmentation effect for dealing damage to softer targets in a wider area. Frag is a fragmentation warhead used for anti-personnel in wider areas, building, clearing, or general soft per target purposes. As you can see, there are many toys you can play with, and there are some nuances among them. The AT-4 is a single-shot launcher. It can only fire once and has to be discarded after. Before firing, make sure you ready the launcher first. Well, if you don't ready it, does that mean you can fire it when it's held down at your waist? RPG is multi-shot. You can reload new warheads into it. The PG variant is heat, and the OG variant is frag. So you can kill sentries now, but why would you? After all, you need less gear and less hassle just to sneak around to get in. Well, you can also loot sentry wrecks, and they have some high-value loot. Thank God. We had said that for gazillion years ago. You will find some nice grenades, a bit of C4, and two new items. The BCU lock. It is here another player, uh, player layer of protection. The BCU lock is a new gadget you can place on your door or wardrobe. It then connects to each of your squad members' BCU and can only be opened by someone who has that BCU. You can still add normal locks as well, so the intruder can only lockpick them if they own your BCU. Wow, okay. That's good. Tear gas grenade. <clears throat> You've been tear gassed fighting it. So it only makes sense you can tear gas others as a prize. Tear gas grenades can now be deployed. Have that pesky building camper inside that won't come out? Gas him out. Someone is waiting for you to exit a room before he will blast you in the face? Gas him out. Experiment. What could go wrong? Kursko. This must be the new POI. 
K-R-S-K-O. Expanding on the horrible, I'm going to go ahead and embellish that, on the horrible nuclear update, we have finally finished the intended POI, so east of the power plant you will find the abandoned city of Crisco. Prepare your hazmat suits and venture forward if you dare to one of the most atmospheric POIs with tons to explore and dangers that await. I might go there right now. I'm saying why. Why the hell would I go there? Why the hell would I go back to the power plant? There's some shots there. Smoking. Uh, another highly requested feature is making its landing, but first a message from our program about fatigue. It's important. Exhaustion has been reworked. Uh, immediately lowering your max stamina as you get exhausted, this body condition will have a buffer. The C1 severity of this body condition will act as a buffer. That means that your max stamina will not lower until the exhaustion effect has reached C2. Now, I wonder if I can still go negative 72 stamina. That'll be something to test. Exhaustion can be temporarily lowered by drinking energy drinks or permanently lowered by eating good food, resting, and smoking. Now that we have that out of the way, okay. It does say smoking kills on there. Lucky stars. Uh, you are free to poison yourself through cigarettes. That's right. After all this time, those packs of cigarettes you've been founding, been finding around, have their usage now. I'll give them credit. Somebody did a pretty good job translating this from whatever language. Uh, I don't know if it's Slavic, Croatian. I don't know what the name of their language is, and I'm sorry for my ignorance. So you want to look cool and poison yourself. Here's a tutorial. First, you need a pack and a lighter. Take out a cigarette. Make sure it's dry. And there you go. You are now smoking. And light it. Okay. And light it. Now you're going to smoke. We'll enter your clothing inventory and ask as a mask while being smoked. And you are free to do what you want while smoking. The cigarette will also help with exhaustion recovery depending on what pack it is. Classics are weaker so they recover less while lucky stars are stronger and recover more. I want to go smoke right now. But don't think you can just do that without consequences. You have nicotine poisoning if you try to smoke too much. has two stages. C1, dizziness, <laughs> disorientation. C2, vomiting, diarrhea, and weakness. Oh, maybe I don't want that. Uh, there is no cure other than Phoenix tears. The only way to get rid of it is to stop smoking. So stop, get some help. Cigarettes are not the only thing that can be smoked, though. You can now farm cannabis. RP players rejoice. Oh, Jesus. Now, I did not see that one coming. As for how to farm, you can check that out in the farming patch notes so I don't have to repeat myself. When you manage to get a plant that will give you buds, all you need is paper. And you know paper, that item you littered the server with every time you found an ammo box or a diary. That is true. I did that. Then you just select one, select the other, and roll it up. Voila, you now have committed a crime, but you're already on a prison island, so don't think someone would care that much. I believe in our state, you can't, uh, you know what, I'm not even going to go into that. Um, again, everything has consequences, so does cabinoid poisoning. Disorientation, bloodshot eyes are C1, bloodshot eyes intensity increases C2, C3, diarrhea, dizziness, heightened senses. Uh, C4, heightened senses, intensity increases in vomiting. Ugh. There is no cure other than Phoenix Tears. Stop smoking, so stop, get some help. Two new symptoms for those of you with keen eyes. Heightened senses increase the intensity your character sees the world around him and perceives colors. Bloodshot eyes gives you the effect of bloodshot eyes. Visually, you, need your cap you will see your capillaries pulsing red around your screen. Okay. Uh, well, okay. I asked for it, and they gave it to us. It's about fucking time you listen to me. <clears throat> that looks like a Ruger Mark. They call it the Kruger. I don't know how they're getting away with that. <clears throat> with that emblem on the grip. Unless they've modified it more than I think just at first glance. That's the Ruger. Old Bo Cephas. Maybe they changed it enough so that it's not uh, copyright infringement. But that is a Ruger Mark. Three, 
maybe that's what I'm, they have mark one mark two mark three mark four twenty two forty five I think the 2245 is Mark III or Mark IV. And then they've got the newest one that has a takedown pin so you can take it apart easily and clean it. The old ones are a bitch to take apart and clean. I have an old one somewhere. I'm not sure where it is, but I have one. Uh, okay, the 22 Kruger, and that's what I said. All I want is a 22 pistol to go with the 22 rifle, and they did it. And I even said I would take a 22 revolver. So I have to play with it, of course. Light and compact, this hunting pistol will be your new toy to hunt around with or run around and give each other players a limp. You can shoot rabbits and chickens with it. Private server settings. There is a big change in the way server settings work now as well. You no longer have to mess around with files and provider overlays. All settings can be accessed and tweaked in-game in the menu. I like that. Simply connect to your server or single game and open the menu. You will see a new option called server settings. I like that. You can edit whatever you wish. I like that. As you can see, it's all nice and tight here on separate tabs. You can access every option. Do note though, settings marked with the asterisk still require a restart before it's active. For single player, just back out into the main menu and continue. Holy Jesus, Batman! Changed files in this update, added, removed, modified. Uh, Steam DB has been running ad free since 2012. Donate or contribute. I'm not going to donate or contribute, but I will tell them thank you. Thank you. All right, so there's 22 minutes of your life on that update. I think that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll go into the game when I can as soon as my game's updated, which it should be.